and welcome to today's video so i am popping in right now because i lost the footage for the initial intro that i had for this video um so here i am <laughs> but in this video it's basically a process very painstaking process of me trying to crochet this top that i'm wearing right now i'm not going to reveal it because i do reveal the final piece at the end of this video so if you want to see how everything turns out then keep on watching temporarily i'm just going to be filming on my phone but i learned how to make this flat granny crochet crochet flat granny crochet stitch and it is a little bit confusing but luckily there was also a written pattern so i don't have to really constantly click through the video so i can just reference the written pattern okay so this is basically where things started to go downhill okay so first i decided to do a new kind of stitch because this one i didn't really like since it was too big so i found one that did multiples of three instead of multiples of four i'll link that in the description box below and then second i decided that i didn't want to continue this uh piece with this kind of yarn because it was too warm and too flimsy for summer so i went back to michael's and i tried to find a new kind of yarn that was a little bit more stiff but also a material that i could wear during the summer so it's not too hot and i found this one from sugar and cream really cute and then i wanted to try this new method where i would measure the back of this shirt because it was essentially the size that i wanted the cardigan to be and i used a tape measure to measure the back and i decided to chain to that size but then i thought oh i should make it oversized and chain more than i really should have i was just chilling you know watching my anime and just crocheting away but you know doing this stitch actually takes a pretty decent amount of time you know to get like the rows going because you have to do like multiple stitches in one stitch and of course by the time that i reached a decent amount of rows it turned out too wide once I realized that I messed up and that it was too wide, I decided to actually restart it and the chains were actually pretty good, like the sizing was really good. I was really happy about it, it looked good. But then this is where we stumble upon another problem. Guys, I'm an actual idiot. Okay, I should have realized from the start that I should have changed an even number, especially if I'm going to make front panels that it should be an even number so that way when it's split in half, it's even okay so <laughs> i'm just gonna i'm gonna take a step back spoiler alert i did not take a step back and i decided to crochet right away and once again crocheting way too big this time i crocheted in the car i crocheted on the beach and then basically i just took some time off away from the camera and decided to actually rethink what i was doing so it's been maybe like one or two days since the last update i think i finally found and made the perfect or semi-perfect sizing i have been crocheting almost non-stop for hours on end for the past like what day is it five days the fifth like five days i have like band-aids on my fingers because i've been holding the needle for so long and the yarn was giving me like uh like yarn burn so I've been working hard <laughs> but like i mentioned i think i finally found the good sizing and it's a little bit more accurate to the actual piece that i'm referencing so this is what i have right now i did do the front panel i did want to crochet and at least finalize the back and front part because i know that if i kept filming and stopping then i felt like i was gonna make even more mistakes and the more mistakes I made, then it, this video is just going to be way too long. And honestly, throughout the past five days, I've made so many mistakes. But I think because I wasn't worried about getting my camera and like trying to film every little bit and piece of what I was doing, I just kind of sat down and really thought about, you know, what would be the best amount and, you know, not really making any mistakes with the crochet pattern because that's the thing that i made the most mistakes on was that whenever i was following the granny stitch pattern i would actually mess up towards the end yeah honestly like if you don't pay attention to this stitch like when you crochet you do kind of mess up a little bit at least for me because i thought i would be doing like a certain row a certain way but it ended up being totally different 
but because I did take a little bit more time to sit, relax, and just chill, um, I was able to get this far. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like on, even though it just looks like this. <laughs> I am wearing a t-shirt, so this might be a little bit awkward and bulky. Okay, so if the other shoulder part was like this. This is kind of like the central idea of what it will look like. I sewed up the sides up to a certain point just so my arm could fit through easily and then the sleeves will be here. And the front panel, you actually don't have to decrease at all. You can just make it the same size as the back and then you fold it over and you have like the collar piece. I will show later how to expand and make the trimming part. So I did find that the chains that I did initially were way too big. I had to make a lot of adjustments to the sizing by actually just testing to see how it looks on me. So I did a lot of um, trial and error. But I did find that doing 60 chains, which is what I did here, and then I have 41 rows, which is the height. And it's a pretty good height because this is where it ends up right now and then if I do the rim, it's gonna be like about half an inch more, maybe like three quarters of an inch more, so it would be like up to my hip bone almost. And obviously for the front panels, it's half of the back, so I just did 30 chains for the front panel and because there's no decrease or anything, you just do it all the way up. Yeah, let me show you how I did the front piece. To start the front panel, we basically have to chain half the amount of the back panel, so for me that was 30 chains. And as soon as I made those chains, I just followed the pattern as normal up until we have to start row 20 because that is when I started to change color. And to change color, basically before finishing the end of the row, when you have two loops on your hook, you then just loop in the other color to finish off that row. And then you chain three and then you just follow the pattern normally again until you have two rows of the new color. And you basically just switch the colors back and forth up until you have like three sections of the new color. So this is what the piece looks like with both front panels on. And it's starting to look like an actual top now, which is chef's kiss. And now we can work on the collar part. So basically, we just have to work from one side of the top piece all the way around to the other side. And we just attach the yarn on one end and we just follow the pattern um, all around until it reaches the certain length that you want it to be. And for my collar, I just did three rows. Okay, so now that it's time to do the sleeve portion, I'm just going to show you guys how I'm doing it. So, still want to make sure that it's on the right side. So basically, the side that you don't like is basically going to be on the inside. So I'm just going to insert my hook, like right here. Basically, right where the seam is. So now we attach the new yarn. basically today was spent on making the sleeve portion and I just want to share another mistake that I made because I don't know you can definitely see the mistake I made for these sleeves especially for this one because when you crochet like around in a circle sometimes it is difficult to find the stitch where you slip stitch into or in this case I had to um, double crochet in one and then slip stitch in one so then I brushed it and I basically missed or I did an extra stitch than I should have which is why it's so angular here so of course I'm going to redo this but this is what it's supposed to look like in terms of shape and it looks a lot cleaner too 
clearly but honestly even right now this is looking pretty good and i'm impressed with myself right now and even with all the mistakes that i made i learned and i grew from it which is why we are at the uh piece that we are right now and i'm i'm really excited for this i'm really excited for this <laughs> so i do want to show you guys my emphasis on the fact that my grip is so bad so for the sleeve part it look it kind of looks okay but actually if you look very closely this side is actually kind of bigger than this side and i can feel it too but they are the same size they are the same length it's just because like on the right arm my grip was a little bit looser so this feels a little bit looser but essentially it still feels like one whole piece like it's not heavier on this side or anything should i make the collar bigger actually before i do that okay let me make the collar a little bit bigger and i'll be right back okay but now we can officially move on to the different stitching part and we are going to be doing this kind of stitch can you see that i think this is called a shell stitch i could be wrong but it's basically like round and cute <laughs> and it's just going to go along the edges here so i think what i'm going to do because i think it will be easier if we could do it like all the way around all at once so basically we're going to start from this side go all the way around to this side go up follow this all the way around and then it will go back here gingerbread vibes <laughs> i have finished the shell stitch and the brown uh rim around and it looks so good so i would start on the pockets now just to continue this crochet marathon going on but i want to do the buttons first because sewing is not my best strong suit so i'm gonna sew the buttons on first i was going to buy some buttons but i decided that i don't want to spend any more money and i know my grandma probably had some buttons laying around in like that tin that was a cookie tin but when you open it it's actually not a tin of cookies it's actually a tin of sewing needles yeah that one <laughs> But she has a bunch of sewing stuff and actually like a whole bag of buttons so i it looks like this they're kind of not all the same though um just because they're like various buttons but but i think that's the fun of it i think it's just going to make this piece much more unique okay so i'm going to sew on the buttons and i'll be right back Okay, so the buttons are on. I did five buttons in total because based off of the image, it seems like the first button was more closer to where the collar was folded. And it's not exactly the same, but it's, you know, 
similar concept. Yeah, this is what it looks like. And now it is time to move on to the pockets. So for the pockets, I basically just chained and then put it against the cardigan just so I can see how it would look, at least size-wise. And for me, I decided to do 15 chains and then I just did the pattern as usual until I reached a certain height. And then only at the top of the pocket, I started to do the shell stitch. And then after that, I just did everything like I did before with the brown rim. And then I placed the pockets where I thought it would be good and I just sewed it on. I didn't sew the top though because then it wouldn't really be a pocket. I just sewed along the sides and we were done. I know today is not the greatest hair day for me right now because my curtain bangs desperately need to be trimmed but today is the day that I can finally reveal the final piece to you guys and I can't believe it's been finished within a week but are you ready to see it? We're gonna do a transition, okay ready? One, two, three. Ta-da! So I know it may not be like the best thing to some people, but honestly, I think for the first time, technically not the first time, but like the first cardigan button top thing, like making this was totally out of my comfort zone for the amount of knowledge and practice that I have with crochet. So the fact that I pushed myself to actually try, learn from my mistakes and continue to actually finish this, like that that's what's really important to me and honestly i think it looks pretty good for my level of crochet but that is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around if you want to see more crochet videos let me know and we can just grow and learn to crochet together but yeah let me know what you guys think and i'll see you in the next video bye